The following program is the work of the broadcast students at the British Columbia Institute of Technology. BCIT Magazine features news stories from around the Lower Mainland which were produced over the last week. Responsibility for the content of the show rests completely with the students and their instructors. Coming up on BCIT Magazine, angry drive through customers. A Grizzlies throwback. And painting through the pandemic. Welcome to BCIT Magazine. I'm Bahula Sharma. And I'm Anthony Korea. Let's take a look at the top stories this week. It may cost you more if you want to park your vehicle in Vancouver. City Council is considering a new plan which could remove free parking. My co-anchor Buhul Sharma gets some reaction. Navigating the busy streets of Vancouver can sometimes be a challenge of its own. Parking restrictions and high rates make it hard to park in a parkade as well. So when it comes to finding parking, sometimes just leaving your vehicle in a residential street is the best option. But that option may be going away very soon. The city is proposing the idea of a city-wide parking permit. This would mean for residents to park in front of their home, they'd be paying yearly fees starting from $30. Residents aren't too happy about Vancouver looking to attack their wallet once again. <laughs> you already pay so much for rent and then having a car like ICBC is so expensive for insurance and it's just, uh, I don't know, it seems a little weird to make people pay to park on their own street that they live on. It's just a real money grab. People pay enough in their taxes and they should be able to park on the street. I feel like there's already such a limited availability for parking in the city. It's a big struggle for a lot of people. So I don't originally like the idea. At least one city councillor is in agreement that now's not the time to be charging people to pay for parking. And the issues that people are bringing forward are affordability. I'm really concerned about that um, at this time, especially during tough economic times. Um, also hearing a lot of concerns just about logistics of how a program would work. For the city, this is about managing the parking supply and demand while implementing their climate emergency action plan. Alongside the $30 starting point for the parking permit, the city would implement a carbon surcharge. This would be added if you purchase a car which isn't eco-friendly. It also gives us a tool that we can use to incentivize people buying new, um, new more expensive vehicles to buy zero emission vehicles. The city says they want two thirds of all travel to be by foot, transit or bike by 2030. It's safe to say for residents of Vancouver, this has the red light, at least for now. Bahul Sharma for BCIT Magazine in Vancouver. During the pandemic, drive through coffee shops have seen an increase in customers. However, as reporter Josh Ferrer tells us, some customers have become pretty bitter. Hi there! drive throughs have become much busier since the pandemic hit, and this has some customers steaming with anger. People have thrown trash at me. Uh, because their latte wasn't done right or people just screaming at our faces because of the smallest inconveniences. This security footage from a Wendy's in Tampa, Florida last August shows how a dispute over an order can escalate into extreme customer behavior. Though the baristas deal with angry customers daily, it has never reached that level. So I realized that we're just people too, we're just trying to do our jobs. Obviously we don't want them to wait long times. We don't want them to like have bad drinks and stuff. A Penn State University psychology study suggests staff that deal with rude customers regularly start to anticipate most customers to be rude. I deal with it on a daily basis. I put on my apron expecting to deal with someone rude that day. Regulars at this Starbucks have also noticed the change in the treatment of the baristas. Ruder, yes. I think it's the whole lockdown and the masks and everything. But yet, no one should forget their manners because you guys are doing all you can inside. 
Al Khalidi says she does what she can to help the baristas feel less stressed out by showing a bit of kindness. We actually turn and look at each other and we're like, oh my gosh, that person was so nice. Like, because we don't expect it anymore. Baristas at the Starbucks hope that more customers keep their cool during these tough times. It makes my day so much better if I'm in drive through and the customer comes in and they're just nice and friendly and make small talk with me. Just, I don't know, just brains up my day. All right, thank you. Have a good one. I'm Josh Ferrer in Surrey for BCIT Magazine. There have been fewer paying customers on the road and the water since COVID hit. The reporter Sebastian Pereira introduces us to the little ferry that could. The Q to Q ferry, which brings passengers across the Fraser River from Queensborough to the New West Key, has struggled to stay afloat throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. Instead of commuting to work via the ferry, Queensborough residents like Alex Zeki have leaned towards using their own vehicles to help reduce the spread of the virus. I mean, it's it's a really small boat, right? So it's it's really hard to be it's hard to be six feet apart in a in a in a really small boat like that. So I just think taking the car is probably probably the safer option in the end, just because you're the only person in it. The ferry stopped operating last March when the pandemic began, but only just returned to full service back in early November. A lot more people are working from home. Um, the commuting is down greatly, but they're using it uh, to go get their groceries without having to go on transit. It's a little bit less people on board, so they're using it for that. According to Jim Lowry, New Westminster's Director of Engineering Services, the q to q is averaging 150 customers per weekend, 80% lower than before COVID hit. New Westminster City Council mentioned in a report the q to q is under financial pressure, but will continue providing service to help the community for the foreseeable future. This is good news for Lezeki, who looks forward to experiencing the ferry's unique atmosphere once again when COVID-19 dies down. I miss it a lot, actually. I, uh... I, I love like I really liked all the workers that worked on that. I, I forget a bunch of their names, but I remember they're always good to talk to and have a nice conversation going across. Sebastian Pereira in New Westminster for BCIT Magazine. Many students are struggling with stress and loneliness this year, but BCIT is launching a new program to try and help students better connect during COVID-19. Reporter Dom Valley tells us how. Most of BCIT's messaging around COVID-19 encourages students to physically distance. But the BCIT Student Association is putting together workshops that aim to help bring students closer together. For me, I think that being, being able to, not being able to have that full you know, community to like study with, to be encouraged with, and you know, buy and all of that can be really difficult if you don't have people that you know you could have a steady mate. Yeah. The Student Association says most students have found this year very difficult to learn from a distance. Not only are they missing that um, opportunity for in-class and after-class interaction, but they're then kind of forced into maybe a one-bedroom apartment or one room in a basement where they're studying. Now the Student Association is teaming up with nursing students to provide workshops that they hope will help students cope with stress and loneliness. Creating kind of a, a welcoming space, a place where students, you know, might not feel or might feel reduced stress or anxiety or at least that they feel like they're comfortable to ask for that assistance. One of the reasons Nickel believes it will be a success is the peer-to-peer -peer connection. I think this is especially good because it's kind of student to student instead of, um, you know, us telling students what you need. It's they themselves know what BCIT students are going through. They, they know generally what BCIT students need. Um, and I think it's great too to have that peer-to-peer -peer education. This student agrees with that sentiment. Because obviously once people know that, you know, it's, yeah, it's student oriented as well too, that, that's a different thing rather than just coming from faculties. The new initiative could help people put some COVID stress aside and work together to finish the semester strong. Dom Valley, in Burnaby for BCIT Magazine. Reporter Dom Valley joins us now. Dom, what are some of the hurdles they're trying to help students overcome? Things like virtual learning, having to social distance from classmates and friends, and finding new ways to relieve stress with things like the gym, 
pub and other amenities not available on campus right now. Back to you. Thanks, Tom. A new report says Metro Vancouver home sales increased by 52% in January over last year. The Real Estate Board of Greater Vancouver says a shift in housing needs during COVID-19 and low interest rates are key factors. Coming up after the break, getting a good deal for the environment. And we meet a TV legend. I'm Darren Piper. And I'm Madison McKenzie. This is your community calendar for Thursday, February 4th. It's a big weekend for all the NFL fans out there. This Super Bowl Sunday, check out Tom Brady and the Buccaneers take on Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs in what's sure to be a legendary matchup. Looking to get your grub on? The Medina Out Vancouver Festival is for you. With over 300 restaurants offering three course meals, you'll be sure to find some tasty dishes. Probably better than these. This event runs from February 5th to March 7th. Don't forget to reserve your table early. Hmm. Oh, didn't see you there. Well, this Valentine's Day, why not treat your boo to a home-cooked meal with a little help from Belgard Kitchen. The Gastown Restaurant presents Apron Club, full meal kits with step-by-step -step YouTube videos, available to pick up starting February 12th. Now what to choose? All this talk of food's making me hungry. Hey, give me a bite of that. No way! I'm Darren Piper. And I'm Madison McKenzie. And this is your community calendar. Welcome back to BCIT Magazine. He's worked at television stations around the continent, but for the past 50 years, Rob Nason has called BCIT home. As reporter Stephen Lowe found out, Nason's biggest success has been training the next generation. Hi, I'm Stephen Lowe with BCIT Magazine, and today I'm joined by Rob Nason, a BCIT television production instructor who is celebrating 50 years at the institution. Hi, Rob. Thank you so much for joining me today, and congratulations on that milestone. Oh, thank you, Stephen. You know, it's really just a number. So why did you decide to stay at BCIT for 50 years? So I thought, you know, it's a nice balance, which it was starting around 1976, where I've always been able to either be in the industry getting paid to be working as either a technical director or a director or a technical producer, and then at school teaching it. What was it like when you first started and how would you compare then and now? Starting at BCIT in 1971, there were, um, let's say, out of a class of uh, 20 television students, just to keep it simple, I would say it was usually 15 men, five women. Today, uh, and for many years, uh, television has certainly focused on having an equal representation of men and women. So where are your students now? If you look at any of the uh, local channels, but the staff that have been able to survive and maintain employment are really BCIT television production video production graduates. I'm just curious, um, what, what, what do you like attribute your career's longevity to? I'm sorry he's left us now. Uh, Larry King, God rest his soul, is absolutely a brilliant interviewer. People would say to Larry, so what are you doing? He, he would say, I'm just keeping on, keeping on. And uh, God bless you, Larry. And to be perfectly honest, I would say, Stephen, that that's that's been my philosophy ever, ever since I was a teenager in high school. I just keep on doing it. Thank you so much for joining me today, Rob. Have a great day and keep well, stay well. Let's just beat COVID into the ground. I'm Stephen Lowe for BCIT Magazine. The 55th Super Bowl takes place this Sunday, February 7th. Tampa Bay takes on Kansas City in the biggest game of the year. But BC's top doctor, Bonnie Henry, is asking everyone not to attend parties and instead enjoy the game at home in your bubble. No one really knows why some of the hottest basketball gear in Vancouver 
is connected to a team that hasn't played here in decades. My co-anchor Anthony Correa solves the mystery. When heading into Rep Your Colors memorabilia store, you will see some historic clothing, like this Michael Jordan All-Star jersey or a Wayne Gretzky Burger King jersey. But the big attraction is Vancouver Grizzlies apparel. And colors kind of got a lot of fun for a little while there. Uh, I think it really pops. Phil Kinemont owns Rep Your Colors, a new business that focuses on unique and vintage apparel for Canadian sports fans. Another one of his goals? Build the largest selection of Vancouver Grizzly products. Even though the team isn't in the NBA anymore, Phil thinks it's a market he can capitalize on. You start kicking around ideas of, you know, you're a Grizzlies fan, obviously, so... You know, can you make a Michael Dickerson jersey, just, you know, a limited run of them? Can you do a Steve Francis one? You probably don't, but you start thinking about fun things that people are going to walk in your shop and hopefully get that effect of, holy crap, I haven't seen that in a store or even online ever. Kinemount thinks the market for Grizzlies apparel grew significantly when the Memphis Grizzlies wore these throwback jerseys during their 2019-2020 NBA season. And some fans around the city love the look of them. 100% I think they should be more around town. Like, they're such a nice jersey, and, like, in every color they have, both the, like, the neo one, like, this color, the whites, and the dark ones, like, they are such a nice jersey. Kat Jane created the documentary Finding Big Country and is a Vancouver super fan. She loves seeing all the jerseys around the city and thinks it shows that Vancouver should get a second shot at an NBA franchise. The Grizzlies, um, you know, Grizzlies gear is hot now, and um, it's really cool to see, um everybody wanting Grizzlies gear and I think that's just uh, one of the a sign that kind of says yeah we're one of the many signs that says that we're ready for another team. Watch for Kinemount as he opens pop-up stores in various malls around the lower mainland and maybe the Grizzlies will make a comeback. Anthony Correa in Burnaby for BCIT magazine. Shopping in second-hand stores wasn't always popular but now a new generation has discovered the magic of thrifting. Reporter Hannah Garnett tells us more about this growing trend. Searching countless hours through secondhand clothing may not be your favorite way to spend your day off. The North Face is actually really big right now. But for avid thrifters, the thrill of a good deal while being sustainable calls their name every day. There are ways to be more sustainable every single day in your life, you know, especially it's more than just recycling, you know, reuse, reduce, recycle, there's a lot more to it. Ooh. Shopping in secondhand stores was once frowned upon, but now it's the trend of the year. I feel like trends these days is more like based around personal taste. And a first store is good for offering that because we get so much stuff in, like just from different people, like throughout the ages. Mm -hmm. From a report done by Value Village in 2020, thrift stores on average have seen an increase of $200,000 each year since the beginning of 2012. And despite COVID-19, the trend is still hot. Um, there's also a lot of people that unfortunately are stuck at home and they're just waiting for their checks from the government. So it's like there's only so much they can really do with that money. So it's like they need new clothes, so they got to come somewhere where it's actually reasonable, it's affordable, they're not having to pay like $100 for a t-shirt. During the pandemic, many thrift stores transitioned online for customers to browse the virtual racks. I actually was able to thrift because it allowed a lot of thrift stores and local shops to start making that online switch. Whether it's saving money, helping the environment, or rocking that dress that can't be found anywhere else, thrifting is having a moment. Thrifting kind of gives you the upper hand and edge and people start to wonder like, oh, where'd you get that from? You know, and I'll get compliments and, you know, when you say you thrifted it, people are like, you know, because a lot of the times it's one of one. So remember, next time you want that new to you dress, maybe check your local thrift store first. I'm Hannah Garnett in Vancouver for BCIT Magazine. A local musician had to change his tune when COVID-19 took away his opportunity to play live shows. Reporter Corey LaTondra explains how he's gone from using his voice to using his hands. Painting isn't the medium Keaton Campbell is used to. Normally, he expresses himself in a different way, as the lead singer of the band of Modern Architecture. It 
has this like infinity kind of circle to it. But with mm-hmm. pandemic guidelines in place, his band hasn't been able to get together for practices or shows. This has forced him to reach out and find another way to deal with his depression. A form of release, a form of escape, a form of kind of taking the things that are troubling my head and kind of putting them somewhere tangible that I can almost keep an eye on them, if that makes sense. One Vancouver therapist says using art can be a way for someone to work through their issues when talking or writing about them isn't helping. So art, in a way, is also opportunities for you to, um, you know, not only create stuff from maybe connect with your inner child, but also um, you can heal your wounds while you're creating. Keaton says he never goes into a session with a predetermined focus, preferring to let his hands and feelings guide him in the moment. He says that in that respect, it's more cathartic than songwriting. Whereas this, like, I can kind of see where my mind was. Like, if it's very pretty, it's just like, oh, yeah, like, my head was in a very positive space. Whereas, like, if it's very dark, I'm like, woof, like, what was, what was going on, right? So, yeah, I'd say it's almost, almost more of a more of a mental release than the band in a, in certain regards. Keaton says that once restrictions are lifted and he can get back together with his band, he'll still make time to paint and plans on creating a piece for each song on their new album. Corey LaTondra, in Port Coquitlam, for BCIT Magazine. In weather, we're going to enjoy some sunny days this week and into the weekend, but be careful if you're heading into the mountains as Avalanche Canada is warning about unstable slopes after heavy rain and snow. If you have any questions regarding the show, you can contact us at bcit-broadcast.com or bcitnews.com. Thanks for tuning in to BCIT Magazine. I'm Bahul Sharma. And I'm Anthony Korea. We'll see you next week.